Because somebody stops coming to the church doesn't mean that I quit loving them, quit caring about them. Right. Unless they say to me, leave me alone. Now you tell me to leave you alone, I, you know, I leave you alone. Yeah. And uh, sometimes people, they cuss at you, huh. use profanity at you. Somebody um, that I have been keeping in contact with changed their number or whatever, and I was to, you know, I can reach out to people. And then whoever it was evidently didn't like the fact that I was texting and they cussed at me and I'm just they were welcome. And I told them, I said, well, I'm Pastor Woods and I'm Pastor of the Church of Diane and Bottles. And I said this, I said, God bless you. I didn't get back ugly with them. I didn't get in the mud. I didn't, I, I, I take the high road. Amen. Amen. A lot of times in situations, People will come at me a certain way, I just take the high road. It's not worth it. Right. it it's, it's not worth that. Amen. Because at the end of the day, we're serving God. You're not serving me. You're serving yes. God. Amen. So we can't lose sight of that. So as a pastor, I can't keep let things get personal. Right? right? That got Moses in trouble. Right. Moses led. Moses led to get personal. He struck that rock. God said, I didn't tell you to strike the rock. And because he struck the rock, God didn't let him go into the promised land. He said, um, he said, go up to the mountain, go up on the mountain, look at look into the promised land. But because at the rock, Mariba, when I told you to, what I told you to do, you didn't do. So you're not going in. I'm going to let Joshua take the I'm going to let you see it. And not only that, he buried Moses himself. No one even knows where Moses is buried. God did it. Why? Because you don't play with God. You don't play with God. Right? So I just, I, I, I try not to, to, to take things personal. Amen. People do things, say things. I just say, hey, praise God. God bless you. I see you in the winning circle, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna still we just see you in the winning circle, <laughs> whatever, man. Um, I just I know that I'm just trying to do what God wants me to do, and I'm not trying to get in a situation where God has to deal with me in that way. All right. So anyway, I don't want to keep you here long tonight. Um, I appreciate you coming to for, for a night of thanks. I pray that God bless you on this Thanksgiving. Uh, week and um, that you have a wonderful time and that you have lots to eat. <laughs> Brother Lance already had his Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'll have another one, right, bro? You know, I have another one. And uh, he said, hey, I had Thanksgiving today. Oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> Amen. So, but anyway, we appreciate all of you and uh, continue to pray for Sister Nina. And um, she'll be back. She had to. Go out of town for a little bit, but she'll be back. Yes. Amen. Keep her in your prayers. I got a, uh, I reached out. Uh, Brother Bernard doesn't normally come, but he'll, a lot of times he'll drop his offering out, off, stay right down the street. Um, he texts me because I text everybody, won't you come to service? Come to service. He said, Pastor, my sister died. Oh. And so pray for their family. He yeah. just stay right down the road here. And uh, so it's just so many things. So many things. Um, somebody called me. Somebody reached out to me. And um, was in counseling. Their marriage was that my wife and I have been doing for a long time. Their marriage. I'm just saying, it's so many things. Yes, sir. And a lot of times people don't realize. They don't realize. So we're just praying. We're just praying and asking God to help us. Yes. Amen. Be faithful yes. to God. Be faithful to God. I want to just share, I just want to share a little bit of something with you that I hope and pray will be a blessing. Um, thanks. All right, now, one of these days, God's going to bless us with a real nice PA system. Amen. But a PA system is better than no PA system. That's true. Amen. That's true. And it's easy to say, why don't you... Uh, well, get in line and be the first one to give to it. <laughs> oh! Mm, mm, mm. That changes the whole world, Right? Put your mind
wonder where your complaints are. <laughs> right? Okay. I'm having a good time. But I'm just saying, God knows. And just like God's been doing everything else, He's able to bless us with all. Yes. And anyway, Brother Chris, we got a, I, I told Brother Chris, soon as Thanksgiving's over, we're supposed to do it before. It's been so many things uh, that's been coming up. But we got to sit down. I got a, a, a list of things that we need to get so that we can improve. We're going to put monitors up on both sides get, you know, and raise that up. Put monitors up. Put a camera up. You know, do the whole set up, set up a, a system. To where somebody can actually have like a game and computer. The whole deal. We're going to get the whole deal. You say, well, how are we going to do it? The same way we've been doing it. Depending on God. Yes, sir. I already have two people. I have somebody. I have people that I know that's not even a part of the church. Have already told my wife and I. Somebody that lives six hours away. And somebody that lives, uh, that's an hour behind us. They said, when you when you get ready to do that, you let me know, I'll give to it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't even go to church here. Yes, right? sir. So, God is blessing, so we're good. Yes. It's going to be okay. And uh, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. This is not the first time I've ever had to believe God for something. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And it won't be the last. Yes, so, sir. buckle up. Buckle up. And learn how to believe God. Yes. Man, you better, you better learn how to believe God. Because you're not going to always have things right there at your disposal. Mm -hmm. You have to trust God. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm telling you. In everything give thanks. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything give thanks. For this is what? of God in Christ Jesus. You figured that out already, then. What's the will of God for your life? Most of us think, well, if God wants me to be a pastor. God wants me to be a, a, an evangelist. God wants me to be an usher. God wants me to play music. God wants me. Are you sure about that? What does the Bible say? <laughs> the Bible says in everything, do what? Yes. Give thanks. Yes. For this is the will of God. Because you can't do anything for God until you learn how to be thankful. Yes, sir. If you're not thankful, you won't work productively. You won't work smartly. You won't work intelligently. You won't work spiritually. Your work for God will not be food. I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to show it to you. Let's look at it again. Now, what's the will of God for your life? In everything. You mean everything? Isn't that what the Bible said? What about the time I went to jail, Pastor? You better be thankful. What about that time I was addicted and I, was, I had habits and and I, and I violated this one and did this and did. The Bible says in everything give thanks. You know why? Because whatever it is that you have been through or experienced is brought you the way you are. Yes, sir. And maybe if you had not had those experiences you might have still thought that you was okay to continue to do it. Can I get a witness? In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. you. Why? Number 
most of us, we wouldn't think of things. We wouldn't even think of this. Like, man, uh, sitting down praying over your meal or uh, being able to go to the store and if you want something to be able to buy it. You should be thankful. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's a blessing that if you want a bag of potato chips and a can of pot, that you can stop and do that. That if you needed a shirt or a pair of clothing or some clothing or, or if you needed if you go want to have to go to Walmart to buy groceries or, or it's a blessing and you should be thankful yeah. that you're able to do that. Yes, sir. Amen. Or you get a bill and you say, Pastor, I wasn't able to pay all the bills, but I was able to work out a um, a payment plan. Be thankful. Yes. Even if you could pay the whole bill, or you had to pay a pay, do a payment plan, it still be thankful to God. Yes. Be thankful. What does the word thanks or thankful mean uh, in the Greek, in the original, in which this was penned in this scripture? Uh, translated by King James the in, from the original um, um, Greek manuscript in 1611 by King James. Graciousness of act. Graciousness of act or manner. Especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in life. In other words, looking to God, understanding that it is Him that gives you this ability and, and gives you this allowance. And think about the influence of God upon your heart that allows you to be gracious in your manners and gracious in understanding that I have this or I can do this because of God. Yes. Amen. It's important to raise your children to say please and thank you. Yes, sir. We didn't allow our children to disrespect us. You don't call me by my name. I'm your father. You don't call your mother by her name. She's your mother. You say ma'am. Or you say, sir, and they still do. Yes, sir. They're all grown. They still say, ma'am, it's sir. Yes. And I say it to, I say, when I ask them something, I say, thank you. Yes. Please. Amen. Whatever the case may be. Yes, I still do it, even though they're my children. Because, it, because being thankful, yes. being thankful is godly. Yes. Being thankful is spiritual. The Bible said that it's the will of God. So when you sit around Thanksgiving, when you're watching a football game, or when you're spending time with that family member that's a nuisance, and we all have that family member that you're like, oh God, let me buckle up, let me, let me, uh, let me brace myself. Be thankful. Be thankful that they're still there to irritate you. Yes, sir. We have heard the saying that you can get more bees with the honey than you can with vinegar. Yes, sir. You can get more bees. It's better. Uh, one of our uh, pastor also who's the head of our whole church group said something in a class one time. I think it may have been in a class or when he was preaching. I, I, I Don't hold me to that. It may have been in a class or it may have been in preaching. And, and something that has stuck with me for the rest of my life, he said, always stay sweet in your spirit. Yes. Always stay sweet. When you're pastoring, when you're leading people, it's important. You can't get angry real easily. You can't get upset real easily. You can't just fly off the handle. You have to have a gentle spirit. You have to have a faithful spirit. You have to be sweet in your spirit because you represent God. Amen. Amen. I don't stand out in the yard and cuss the, the neighbors out. And all these 
those things. Take the high road. People are more apt to help you when you say thank you. I promise you that. They're more apt to, to because really, can I let you in on a secret? No one owes you anything. You don't owe me anything. I don't owe you anything. But when somebody does something out of the kindness of their heart, it just makes you so thankful. Yes. And to say, God, is so good to be able to show gratitude mm -hmm. and to show graciousness yes. and to be able to say, it was so kind and nice of this person. Like I was telling Sister Pat when she walked in, and then to her it might not be a big deal, but she donated a tree and some, some, some uh, decorations and things to the children's yes. church. Yes. I'm thankful for that. Yes. I'm thankful for that. You didn't have to do it. You could have kept the tree. Yes. To be in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't owe it. You didn't owe it to him. You didn't owe it. If you want anything in life that is of usefulness, if you want anything in life that is of significance and such like, it will be achieved because you did it with gratitude and thankfulness. Uh, if, it's, if it's got some kind of meaning to it. Now you may achieve something, but it does matter how you built it. Yes. I don't want success, Brother Chris, if I got to step on you to get it. Yes. Amen. Brother, Brother Aaron, I don't want to be successful in life if I got to find fault with you and criticize you and talk behind your back. Yes, or if I got to run you down and always talk about how great I am and how terrible you are. I don't want it that way. I want to tell you guys about a story in the book of Luke chapter 17. And it's the story about the ten lepers. You remember the ten lepers in the Bible? Yes. Lepers, it was like, it's this incurable skin disease. It's an incurable skin disease. And it was so bad that they would banish them to the outskirts of society. And a lot of times when they would come up to someone, they had to declare, I'm clean, not clean, not clean. And so Jesus came upon these lepers, or these lepers came upon Jesus. And in Luke 17, verse 15 and 19, I want you to listen to this. This is a real blessing. I know this might be a little different tonight. It's different from Sunday, isn't it? And but it, but believe me, it'll, it'll 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 bless you if you'll listen to it, if you'll receive it, if you'll allow it to speak to your heart. It'll bless you tonight. Yes. And then verse Luke seventeen verses fifteen through nineteen. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, so what happened? They wanted to be healed, right? Jesus healed all ten of them. Not eight, not seven, not five, not three. All ten of them, Sister Dora, he healed them all. Isn't it nice when you pray and you ask God to do something and he does everything you ask him to do? <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? You're like, oh! And then, and you know, even, and sometimes then we'll say, God, I, I need you to do this and do that. And then sometimes he doesn't do it. And you're like, man, what in the world? But you know that's a reason. God loves us, so you know if he doesn't do it, there's a reason for it. But we don't look at it that way. God, where are you? <laughs> you ever thought that sometimes unanswered prayers are a blessing? Yes. yes. Unanswered prayers. God Brooks, one of his first major, one of his first major hits as, as a country music singer, yeah. Yeah. was un he, he thought he was just supposed to marry his high school sweetheart. Turns out that wasn't, it wasn't what God wanted. Amen. He said, thank 
God for unanswered prayers. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, so all ten of them got healed, right? That means that the skin disease stopped, and in some cases, the disease would eat the limbs. And maybe their hands or some of their extremities would be disfigured. So when so what happened was when Jesus healed them, he stopped the disease. The disease stopped. Their skin was healed. And whatever condition the hands was in, the legs was in, or whatever, the disease stopped right there. Okay? Now that would be great, wouldn't it? God, thank you for healing me, taking the leprosy away. Yes. I thank God for forgiving me. But I want God to put help me get my life put back together too. Amen. Can I get a witness? Now, 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 Brother Dave, I want you to check this out. I want to, I want y'all to, I want to give you some insight. Look at what Jesus did here. So, and one of them, verse uh, 15 says, but what only one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he looked at his body, looked at it, oh man. <laughs> and turned back. And turned. You see, some people come to church and God touch them, and they never come. They don't come back. They read the Bible and God speak to their heart, but they don't go back. They'll get on their knees at the time of desperation and ask God to help them, and God will help them, and they don't go back. They don't go back. I got the help I need. Mean, I'm good now. So the other nine, Brother Chris and, and, and Brother Larry, God touched them. I'm healed. I'm good. I can go back into the community. I can go and do everything I need to do. But the one, but one of them who was not even a Jew, he was a Samaritan. He said, whoa, 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 hold on here. I'm healed. And the Bible said he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, sister. Yes. With a loud voice, he glorified God. Yes. And then he didn't stop there. And fell down on his face at his feet. He went to Jesus. He fell. First of all, he turned back. He turned back. Then he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus. And then stick with me now. Giving him what? Thanks. <laughs> Giving him thanks. And he was a what? Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are those people that when they called on me, I answered? Where are those people that when they were desperate, I answered? Where are those people that when they were looking for answers, they opened up the Bible and I talked to them? Where are He said, where's the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. Stick with me now. I'm not going to be much longer. I know you're bored to death, but that's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I may get ready to share something right here that may change your life. I may get ready to share something here that might cause you to see the things of God in a completely di different manner that you've never seen before. Because maybe you came and prayed for salvation and God healed you and God forgave you, but maybe that's all you want. Maybe that's all you desire. But this one man came back. This, this is the kind of person we're looking for in the church. The person that said, man, God did something for me. Man, in my, in, my, in my darkest hour, God helped me. When it looked like I was going down for the last count, God came through and God met my need and God touched me and God helped me. I got to turn back. I got to come back. Brother Man said I came Sunday night. I'll see you Tuesday night. Because God touched my life. Because I used to be homeless. But now I have 
and sisters. Jesus said, where's the nine? Where's the others? But a man that wasn't even of Jewish religion, a man that wasn't from the neighborhood, uh, he came back and gave God the glory. Yes. I'm glad God doesn't care what color you are. I'm glad God doesn't care what your economic status is. I'm glad God doesn't care about your uh, 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 what your social background and all these different things. Uh, he said, whosoever will, uh, let it come. Uh, oh, I'm so glad tonight. He said, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And then verse 19, the game changer, the life altering, difference making, uh, game changer. And he said unto him, Arise, get up, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee what? You know what he did? He didn't just heal him, he gave him his limbs back. Yeah. Uh, God. Oh God. You see, when you thank God, when you thank God, He'll put it back together for you. You see, you can't just come to get healed. You can't just come to get touched. You can't just come to get what God wants. But when you show gratitude, when you show God that you care, God said, I'll put your life back together. I'll give you your reputation back. I'll give you your life back. I'll give you what the devil took, what the locusts have eaten. I'll put it back together in your life. Amen. What's the will of God for your life? For you to be thankful. Yes. Because he went back. Jesus restored his body back completely. They, they, they got healed. Mm -hmm. But he got completion. He said, oh, yes. God, I don't, want, I, I don't just want you to forgive me. I don't want you to just let me come and repent. Uh, but I want, you to, I want you to help me to put my life back together. Uh, I want you to help me to put my relationships uh, and my reputation uh, and my character uh, and my life uh, and everything uh, back together. I'm going to tell you something else God will help you with if you're living. He'll bless your finances. Yes, Would he not sir. bless your finances? Amen. Amen. God will make you a success. Yes, sir. I say God will make you a success. Yes. All you got to do is come back to him you, and do it with gratitude. Yes. The Bible said he came back and gave Jesus thanks. And Jesus said, I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to put you all the way back together. Yes. Amen. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, I thank you. I want to, uh, I want to, uh, I hesitated to share this. But I want to end with this. And I have lots of material here. But I, I'm going to end with this. And I hesitate to even share this with you because some people are not mentally and spiritually ready to receive the word of God. Some people just want to drink milk all the time. But I'm getting ready to give you some meat. I'm getting ready to share something with you. If your mind and your heart is open to it, It'll revolutionize your spirituality. Your faith and your walk in God. If you just, if you just listen, the word of God is so powerful. If it's preached in the unction of the Holy Ghost, and if it's done with the love of God, it can help uplift the lives of men and women. I really believe that. Yes, sir. I want to share something with you. Found in Romans chapter one, and uh, I failed to. I really should have 
added these on so you can actually see the scriptures. Because, but I want you to follow along with me as I get ready to close tonight, okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 27. It's a lot of verses, isn't it? I think it's 11 verses, I guess. Paul writing to the people of Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, because that's who Jesus came to for, for when they rejected him. The Bible says in John chapter, Gospel of John chapter 1, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But unto them that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that what? Believed on his name. So anyway, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believe it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we got that. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. In other words, from experience to experience. It takes faith to get through each thing that you may go through in God. Faith to faith. All right? As it is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. That's, that's it. Okay, we got all that. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed or unleashed from heaven against all ungodly. And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in what? Unrighteousness. God, God's main interest is to get you out of Satan. Did you know that? <laughs> it's to get you out of a life of wrongdoing. That's what God's main interest is in saving you, cleansing you. As you read the Bible, as you spend time with God in prayer, as you come to services, it's God's desire to help you to grow in grace, to get out of sin, to get rid of the things in your life that's influencing you to do the wrong thing, and on and on and on. That's what God's will, that's one of the wills of God. But 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 I'm going to show you something in the word of God that you're not going to hear everywhere you go. Okay? Verse 19, because that when because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Every last one of you, if you will do what God wants you to do, have the ability for God to be manifested in you through your life. Let your light so shine that men may see you. You know, this thing. If you'll do right, if you'll change, if you'll make all the adjustments, you can, God can be manifested to other people in your life. Do you not know your life and God in you may be the only God some people will ever see? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. All right, moving along. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they, so that they are without excuse, right? You can take a tree and just look at that tree and you ain't no doubt in your mind, you know where it's God. You just look at the tree and then you can take a tree and you can make paper, you can make money, you can do other things with all these things are a revelation that there, so you can take things that are that, that that's there, and then you can take it and do something else with it. But you know, it all stems from it. it all starts with God. It starts with God. You can take a flower, how in the morning it's closed up, and when the sun comes up, it opens up. It's almost as if it's praising God, and then you have a, a plants and, and trees and things and photosynthesis. That gives off oxygen and all of these things. Only God can come up with something like that. How you have the moon yes. and the pull of gravity. Yes. And if it was one, if it was any bit more out of place, 
we'd all be floating around. You know, gravity would, the pull of gravity would not be the same. Or maybe it'd be completely the other way or whatever. But anyway, verse 21, what, what time is it? Oh, I got a little bit of time. I got, I got a little bit of time. This is great. <laughs> Usually on Sunday, man, I'm like, Phew, y'all. But this thing, you're getting straight gospel, straight word of God. I'm talking to you about the will of God in your life, being thankful. Yes. And um, if we were to close right now, you've got it plenty. You've got it plenty. But anyway, because that when they knew God, verse 21, they glorified him not as God. Neither were what? Thankful. In other words, I look at Brother Aaron, I look at Sister Dora, I look at Sister Jackie, but my other, I see men, I see women, right? Stick with me. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. I see men, I see women. But the Bible said that they took what God created and they were not thankful. Stay with me. All right? But became vain in their what? Imaginations. And their foolish heart was dark. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. It's foolish to think that you can take what God made and turn it into something else. You're unthankful. I, I, that's not... I don't like what God made. I'm going to change it and make it something else. <laughs> Stick with me. Now this is Bible. This ain't me just hooting and tooting. This is the word of God. I owe this to you. I argue to you to tell you what thus said the word of the Lord. Listen. So the Bible said they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto what? Corruptible man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. People take things that God made and then turn it and change it into something else. That means you're not thankful. The Bible said they became unthankful. Isn't that what the Bible said? Yes, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to close up in a minute. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made. I just said that verse 24. Now listen at this, everybody. Stick with me. Those of you that are watching online, I'm getting ready to tell you something. I don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you get upset. God told me to share this. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. This is the word of God. Yes, Who changed the truth of God into a lie. You're a woman, but you're talking about you're a man. You're a man, but you're talking about you're a woman. You change the truth of God into a lie. And because you don't want to accept what God made you, you are unfaithful, the Bible says. Yes, I feel the anointing of God in this place. And I'm telling you that in love. I'm telling you that with graciousness. But I'm telling you we can't run and we can't hide from God. Now, I'm not saying we just need to throw people away. I'm not saying we need to not love. I'm not saying that. But we still need to realize what the word of God says. Why should we see it that way? And they turned it into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. We got two more verses. Y'all all, right? all feel okay out there? Yes, sir. Now, this is the Bible. This ain't something I just looked up on Google. <laughs> you know, you got people, 
when they, they'll believe something in a certain way, so they'll look up something that was slant in the way that they believe. This is the Bible. This ain't something I looked up from some, some pinhead uh, 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 person in college or university and all that. I'm talking about the word of God. All right, verse 26. For this cause, because they would not accept the truth, they didn't want to accept what God had made them, they turned the truth of God into the Bible said a lie. All right, now I'm telling you what God said. For this cause, verse 26, God gave them up to vile affection. You want to know why we have transgender? You want to know why we have homosexuality? You want to know why we have lesbianism? Because people are unfaithful for what God means. Read the word. It's Thanksgiving. It's time to be thankful. Amen. I ought to you to tell you what thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For this cause, God gave them up. The Bible said God gave them up. In other words, once a person decides that they're not going to accept what God made, they made up their mind that God literally takes his hands off of them and the devil can just do whatever he wants. Huh? Yes, sir. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. Huh? Error. <laughs> uh, you can call it what you want to. God says error. Amen. So I'm not saying this to hate. I'm not saying this to disparage. I'm not saying this to throw everybody away. I'm just here to tell you that the gospel must be preached. That we must stand on the principles of God's word. And whatever God made, whatever God put together is true and right. And we got to be thankful. And, the, the, and so what you can take from this, what you can take from this, I don't care what sin that you get involved with. It always begins with something you're unthankful for. Kids that go out in the neighborhood and steal and games and do all, they're not thankful that they have a house. It might not be perfect, but you still have a home. You don't have to get out there and commit crime. Uh, young girls get out there, young boys get out there and do all this stuff. It all begins because of unthankfulness. And the parents not doing what they're supposed to do is because they're unthankful. They're unthankful say, so, okay, I'm in this situation. I put myself in this situation. It's not anybody else's fault but yours. Uh, you got to be thankful say, okay, God, uh, I'm in this situation. I need you to help me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to help me get this turned around. But we become unthankful. And down the hill we go. So what's the will of God for the church? We need to get back to being thankful. Stay with me tonight. I said we need to get back to being thankful. Amen. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. I want you to give God the glory. I want you to give God the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to get your, get your mind on God tonight. Get your mind on God tonight. I want you to realize, I want you to understand, it all starts with unthankfulness. But when you have gratitude, when you are gracious, and when you realize that it's because God has blessed your life, you need to be thankful for who you are. You need to be thankful for what God made. You need to be thankful that you're who you are and stop trying to be different. 
Stop trying to change it. Stop trying to be something else. The Bible said they became foolish and dark and darkness in their lives. And God gave them up to vile affection. And men with men and women with women. And that's why we got what we got. Because people are not thankful for the blood. They're not thankful for the cross. They're not thankful that God saved them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to call on him tonight. You said, Pastor, help me. I, I, I need to start being more thankful. I need to start. It's more than eating turkey. That's okay. I, that's fine. Full me. Hallelujah. It's more than eating turkey. It's more than eating ham. It's more than eating sweet potatoes. It's more than watching the football game. But we need to be gracious. We need to show gratitude. And we need to be able to say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for making me a man. Thank you for making me a woman. Thank you, God, that I have what I have. The Bible said, be content with such as you have. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. God, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. I know this is the uh, holiday week. I know this is Thanksgiving week, brothers and sisters. But the Bible said it became vile.